everybody, it's Ashley with At Home with Ashley and today it's the beginning of spring, I'm sick of winter, so we are going to start some seeds. I have a really big garden and I just have been wanting to get better at gardening. I figure it's something I can do until I'm an old lady, so I'm like, I'm going to start now so I can be really good at it then. Um, so what the plan is, is I have a bunch of seeds that we can start eight weeks before the frost and that's today. So let's go get started together and hopefully we can have some little seed babies for once it's officially not going to freeze. Anyway, if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the comment box and I'd love a thumbs up if you like this video. This is the book I read that kind of gave me some tips on how to get started with seeds. It only goes over flowers, but it's a very good resource worth the $20. I am very happy to have it and it's beautiful. I wanted to show you the seeds that I will be starting. I went to my local nursery to grab these. You can buy them online. I'll have a bunch of resources on my blog if you want to do that. And the main reason I am starting seeds um, is because it's much cheaper and it's a very affordable way that you can fill your whole garden with tons of flowers and vegetables. And then another reason is you have access to more seed varieties when you do it this way. So the nursery will only plant so many um, options, but then you can buy tons of seeds online or at your local nursery that are very unique. So that's kind of fun. And you kind of get to start gardening earlier this week, this way. And so you don't have to wait until May to start your garden. You can start in April or March, which I think is really fun. To choose my seeds, especially my vegetables, I made a list of food my family will actually eat. And I compiled this from last year. And there's some seeds I'm just gonna buy pre, like ready to go, so that'll be good. And then I also made a list of plants I want to grow flowers. And I also am just like trying new ones for fun. So that's great. And then the next thing you wanna do is to Google when your last freeze date is. So here in Utah, mine is May 2nd. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your seed packet and turn it on the back and it's gonna tell you maybe started indoors eight weeks before last frost date. So you take this on your calendar, you count back eight weeks and then you get March 8th. That's the first day I can start planting these. And you just don't want to start them too soon because they'll get leggy and they just won't work as well. So just start it when it says. Then you can see I marked each of these with the date I can start them. And some of them have notes like soak the seeds first. Um, and that it says that on the container or Burpee, their website is very good. So you can go online and look at your exact type of seed and they'll give you a ton more instructions than are included on the packet. So I'm keeping these all together and then each week that I start seeds, I'm just gonna grab the ones with the correct date. So that just keeps it very easy. Here are the supplies we're gonna use to start our seeds. First, we have the actual seeds that we've talked about and then we have the cell trays. So this one that has holes in the bottom so it can drain and you can bottom water it. It has this tray, so this is where you'll put the water if you want it, if you want to bottom water it, which you do with little baby seedlings so you don't kill them. So that sits in that and then you have a lid and this controls how much humidity you get. So you can close the holes or open them and then you put this over the top and you want it to have a top when you're germinating it because it holds in the humidity and that's how um, it starts sprouting. So we have that. My kit came with five of these and it also came with a bunch of tags. You're gonna want like a Sharpie or a permanent marker so you can write the name on the front and the date on the back. And then I'm using vermiculite, and what I'm using this for is after you plant the seed, you'll put this over the top because it's easier for the seed to go through this than potting soil. And I am using a very specific type of potting soil for seeds, and it's very fine, and you just want to give the seeds the best chance you can, so get the exact thing. You can get it from any hardware store. I have a container. This is a galvanized tin. It's actually for drinks. But I have always had um, potting soil in this and it's really nice because you can put your stuff in here, put the dirt in it, and then um, you don't get dirt all over the place, which is amazing. And we're going to add water to this, so it's important to have a container for your soil. And then the last thing we're going to need to start our plants germinating is a heat mat. This is what you put on like the table. It heats it up and it keeps the plants nice and toasty so they will grow out of their seed 
and also make sure to have some gardening gloves so that you don't get your hands dirty in the process. We have our potting soil in the galvanized container and then I have water in this watering can and we are going to add a bunch of water to the soil. We're not gonna make it too wet, but we wanna really moisten it up. And this is to help the seeds start. And then you won't have to water for a few days because um, the soil will be so nice and moist. So we'll just keep adding it until the whole thing is wet and moist, not wet, just moist and stir it. And then we'll make, we'll, we're starting to make a real nice house for our seeds. Okay, so let's add some soil to the cells in this tray. So we're just gonna spoon them in with a shovel and um, I'm gonna kind of like li lightly put them in. And then when I'm wanting to um, push them in more, I'm gonna take it to the table and hit it down so that it'll just kind of settle in there without being too compacted. And um, my plan is, is to do a different type of seed in each of these cells because each seed kind of needs a different amount of like light or time to germinate. So I can take best care of it if this whole thing is just one type of seed. So you don't have to fill them all with dirt. If you don't want to put, like if you only want six seeds, only put six cells of dirt in. Um, and then another thing I want to tell you is that you should plant a little bit more than you want to, you want to have. So about 20% more. So if you're like, oh, I only want six seeds, maybe plant seven or eight. Um, if you only want six plants, or maybe plant seven or eight, because some might die. And so this just get, kind of gives you a better likelihood that what you have will um, actually grow into maturity. So we're just gonna do this until these are full and then we will add the seed. So the first plant I want to do is this periwinkle vinca. So I'm gonna write a tag for it. Like I said, these tags came with this container or I know Home Depot carries them. Um, periwinkle vinca. Um, and I definitely wanna make sure to do the tag so that I can mark which one is which so that as it grows, I will know. And I'm gonna put the date on the back, which today is March 8th. So then I can kind of just keep track of how it's growing. Um, now that the tag's made, I'm going to look at the side of the size of the seeds. So I don't know if you can tell, these are like pretty small. And the rule is, let me see if I can get one out even. The rule is that you make a hole for them twice as deep as the seed is big. So these will be small holes. Seriously, I can't get them out. Here we go. Little tiny babies look like a nice poop. Um, so I just have a pencil for making holes for mine. And so I'll make a little baby shell hole. And then I'm just gonna put one of these in. And that's that, that guy is in there and I'll keep going for all of them. And like I said, each tray, I'm gonna do a different type of flower and I'll stick this in so I remember which is which. And it's really kind of easy and straightforward. Um, when all of these are in, I'm going to use some vermiculite to dust the top. I told you guys that that will be um, easier for the seeds to just climb through. So I have all the seeds in on this one. Here's the vermiculite again. And I'm gonna dust the top. And another benefit to doing this is that it's really easy to see where you've gone. So that you don't, you know, like with soil, you could see that it'd kind of be easy to be like, did I cover that or not? Um, so I'm just gonna put these on. It's really light stuff. I haven't worked with it much before. So I'm experimenting and showing you guys based on my research the best stuff. And then I will show you how it actually goes. Okay, so now that that is all planted, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put it in the tray and put the lid on it. So it's kind of like you're putting your babies to sleep. So in here, and because the soil is so moist, you don't need to water it. So in a few days, I'll come back and check how the moisture is doing. And I'm gonna close these holes because it's kind of dry where I'm at. So I want it as humid as possible. So in a few days, I'll check how moist it is. And if it needs to be any wetter, 
I can just take some water and put a half an inch in the bottom of that tray and then it'll seep up through the bottom, create humidity, and he's ready to go. Actually, the last thing I need to do is put him on the heat mat. So I will plug that in and put it on. So in my bedroom, I have a window which will let light in and then I have this heat mat plugged in and this will heat up the um, bottoms of the seeds and help them grow nice and strong. And as soon as they're germinated, we'll take them off of this and put them under lights. So it's gonna be exciting to check on them every day and just kind of see if they've started growing. I also need to monitor the moisture and bottom water them if they need it. But now they are tucked into bed and I am ready to see them grow. So I was checking on these to make sure they were moist enough. And it's only been a few days, but look at in the broccoli bin. We have a sprout. It's the first in my garden. I am very excited about this. So after a few days, here we are, our broccoli. That one's really tall. This third one hasn't sprouted yet, but you're just waiting for 50 to 75% to sprout before you move them to light. So those are ready. And then I believe my snapdragons are too. There's a good amount of them, even though it's hard to see. So we are gonna move both of these under lights today and I'm gonna show you how I do that. Now we are in my basement. We are getting ready to hang our lights. This is how we're going to get the seeds growing through the rest of the season. So first we're drilling a hole into the studs of the ceiling of my basement and then we're just hand twisting this hook into it and that's what the chains are going to hang off of. My husband's using a special tool for opening and closing chain. We hang a lot of chandeliers so we have a tool but if you just have pliers that will work just as nicely. You want to open the bottom part of the chain so that you can slide the shop lights onto it. These shop lights came with chain and special places where you can just add the chain to the back so that's really simple. Um, and you can see all we'll have to do to finish this up is to plug it in. Easy breezy. Here is the grow station all set up. I have my first two plants under here and you want two to three inches from the top of your plant to the light so they don't stretch too much. And so I just have them on different like levels of stuff so that they're about the right height. And then I can change the levels or I can raise this up by going right there there on the hook and raising it up a little bit higher this is just in my basement and it's warm enough you want it like between 50 degrees and 70 degrees or else you know you don't want them too cold too hot and so now I just need to make sure to monitor um, how much moisture they get um, so they don't dry out and then they should be growing which will be nice I am going to bottom water these now that they're under the lights to make sure they have enough moisture I'll check them tomorrow um, because if they're going to be in standing water, that's not good for them. So I'll just put about a half an inch. And once they're stronger, you can water them from the top. But I'm just worried with these little babies that it'll kill them to water them from the top. So we'll start with this. And the holes in the bottom should wick up the moisture. I wanted to show you what I just added, which is an oscillating fan. And what it does is it simulates wind from outside. So it will help make these little tiny sprouts much stronger and I will leave it on the same amount of time I will have the lights on so 13 to 16 hours a day.